Good day, acute angels! Welcome to a new learning episode. This is Teacher Eliza, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Before we start, kindly prepare the following. Your Math 8 self-learning module, your pen and paper for note-taking, or for writing your answers as we go through this discussion. And most importantly, find a place in your home where you feel most comfortable to study and learn. We are now on the last lesson of this quarter, which is the applications of triangle congruence. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to Apply triangle congruence to construct perpendicular lines and angle bisectors. In the first part of this lesson, you will learn about isosceles triangle, the isosceles triangle theorem, the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, and the equilateral triangle. By definition, a triangle is isosceles if its two sides are congruent. These two congruent sides are its legs, and the third side is the base. The angles opposite the congruent sides are the base angles, and the third angle that is included by the legs is the vertex angle. These are the parts of an isosceles triangle. Let's have an example. We have here an isosceles triangle ACT. Will you name its following parts? You may pause this video while answering this, and you may write your answers on the comment section. Are you done? Here are the correct answers. The legs of this triangle are sides AC and AT. The base is side CD. The base angles are angle C and angle T, while the vertex angle is angle A. Great job, grade 8 learners! We can now move on to the isosceles triangle theorem. This theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite these sides are also congruent. For example, in triangle ABD on the illustration below, if AB or side AB is congruent to side AD, then we can conclude that the angles opposite these two sides, which are angle B and angle D, are also congruent. For this example, we will prove the isosceles triangle theorem. In triangle ABD, it is given that side AB is congruent to side AD. We will prove that angle B is congruent to angle D by using the two-column proof. The first column are the statements and the second column are the reason for each statement. For our first statement, let C be the midpoint of BD. And the reason for this is that every segment has exactly one midpoint. Number 2. Since we already have the midpoint of BD which is point C, therefore we can draw an auxiliary line using the point A and the midpoint C because two points determine a line. Number 3. Based on our first statement that C is the midpoint of BD, we can say that segment BC is congruent to segment DC. And the reason for this is the midpoint theorem. Next, based on our second statement on the auxiliary line AC, we can tell that AC is congruent to AC. It's because of their flexive property. Number 5. AB is congruent to AD. This is a given statement. More so, it is because the given triangle is isosceles. Number 6. By using the statements number 3, 4, and 5, 
we can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC because the previous three statements shows that the three sides of triangle ABC are congruent to the three sides of the triangle ABC. And this is because of the SSS or side-side-side postulate. And lastly, number 7, based on our statement number 6, we can say that angle B is congruent to angle D. And the reason for this is that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or the CPCPC. Let us now have the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. This states that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite these angles are also congruent. For example, in triangle DEF, if angle D is congruent to angle E, then the sides opposite these angles, which are side DF and side EF, are also congruent. Let us now apply the isosceles triangle theorem and the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. For this example, we will use the given triangle on the right. Letter A, if angle H is congruent to angle L, name two congruent segments. The answer for this are and segment GH and segment GL. It is because of the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, which states that if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the segments or sides opposite these two angles are also congruent. In our example, these two segments are GH and GL. Next, if segment GI is congruent to segment GK, name two congruent angles. For this one, we will apply the isosceles triangle theorem, which states that if two sides or segments of a triangle are congruent, then the two angles opposite these sides are also congruent. In our example, those two angles are angle GIK and angle GKI. Now let's have example number 4. Find the value of x. In the figure below, the base angles are congruent. Remember that if the base angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite these angles are also congruent. Therefore, 4x minus 6 is equal to 18. Let us now solve this equation. Let's start by removing 6 on the left side of the equation by applying addition property of equality. So we will add 6 on both sides of the equation. And it will become 4x equals 18 plus 6. Then add 18 plus 6 on the right side of the equation. So it will become 4x equals 24. And then, divide 4 on both sides of the equation. Therefore, x is equal to 6. Let's move on to the next example. Find the value of x. Look at the given figure below. This is an isosceles triangle. By applying the isosceles triangle theorem, we can conclude that these two given expressions of the base angles are equal. So 2x minus 25 quantity degrees is equal to x plus 5 quantity degrees. We can now solve this equation. Let us start by grouping like terms on the same side of the equation. So x will be transferred to the left side of the equation, same with 25 to the right side of the equation. Therefore, this will become 2x minus x quantity degrees equals 25 plus 5 quantity degrees. And then combine like terms. 2x minus x is equal to x and 25 plus 5 is equal to 30. Therefore, the value of x is 30 degrees. Now, let us have equilateral triangle. 
it is a triangle in which all three sides are equal. It is also equiangular, that is, all three internal angles are also congruent to each other and each measures 60 degrees. Triangle ABC below is an equilateral triangle since it has three equal sides and three internal angles that are congruent and each of them measures 60 degrees. We are now on the second part of this lesson and we will tackle perpendicular bisector, theorems on perpendicular bisector, angle bisector, and theorems on angle bisector. Let us start with perpendicular bisector. It is a line segment that forms a 90 degree angle. It goes through the midpoint on the opposite side. In our first illustration, Line PY bisects segment XZ. PY is a perpendicular bisector since it forms a 90 degree angle as it bisects the segment XZ. Next, we have triangle RST which has segment MP. MP is also a perpendicular bisector since it forms a 90 degree angle as it bisects the segment ST. And also, by definition, a perpendicular bisector goes through the midpoint. So therefore, perpend the perpendicular bisector MP divides the segment ST into two equal segments. Therefore, segment SM is congruent to segment TM. Let's now have the perpendicular bisector theorem. This states that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. To illustrate this theorem, we have if BM is perpendicular to AB and MA is equal to MB, then PA is equal to PB. In this illustration, PM is the perpendicular bisector, and point P is on the perpendicular bisector PM. Therefore, this point is equidistant or it has an equal distance from each point of the segment AB. That is why PA is equal to PB. Next, we have the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. This states that if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. To illustrate this theorem, we have if PA is equal to PB, then PM is perpendicular to AB and MA is equal to MB. In this illustration, point P is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment AB then it is on the perpendicular bisector PM. That is why PM is perpendicular to AB and MA is equal to MB. Now let's define what an angle bisector is. It is a line segment that bisects one of the vertex angles of a triangle. In our first illustration, we have angle PQR. QS is an angle bisector. An angle bisector divides the angle into two equal parts. Therefore, angle PQS is equal to angle SQR. Next, we have triangle ABC. Segment BD is an angle bisector. And since it bisects the angle B, therefore, angle ABD is congruent or is equal to angle DBC. And if we add these two angles, it will be equal to angle ABC. And of course, we have the angle bisector theorem and the converse of the angle bisector theorem. The angle bisector theorem states that if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. While the converse of the angle bisector theorem states that if a point is in the interior of an angle, 
and is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it is on the bisector of an angle. Now it's time to apply what we have learned on the different theorems on perpendicular bisector and angle bisector. Let's have an example. Find the measure of segment MN. In this figure, we have triangle M and O and perpendicular bisector MP. By applying the perpendicular bisector theorem, we can conclude that MO is equal to MP or MN rather. And since the measure of MO is already given, which is 25, we will just substitute this in the given equation. Therefore, the measure of MN or segment MN is 25. Let us have another example. Find the measure of segment TU. In the given figure below, UW is a perpendicular bisector of the triangle TUD. By applying the perpendicular bisector theorem, we can say that segment TU is equal to segment UD. Now substitute the given expression for each segment. For TU, we have 3x plus 9, and for segment UD, we have 7x minus 17. We can now solve for the value of x. Let us start by grouping the like terms and put them together on the same side of the equation. So this equation will become 9 plus 17 equals 7x minus 3x. And then combine like terms. 9 plus 17 is equal to 26 and 7x minus 3x is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4. So the value of x is 6.5. Let us now substitute this value of x to the expression 3x plus 9. So 3 multiplied by 6.5 plus 9 is equal to 28.5. Therefore, the value or the measure of the segment du is 28.5. Moving on to our last example, find the measure of angle TSU. In the given figure below, US is an angle bisector of the angle TSR. This means that US divides the angle TSR into two equal parts, and these are the angles TSU and RSU. Let us now substitute or equate the given expressions for each of these angles. For angle TSU, we have 5Z plus 23, and for angle RSU, we have 6Z plus 14. We can now solve this equation to get the value of X. Let us start by grouping like terms on the same side of the equation. So this will become 23 minus 14 equals 6Z minus 5Z, and then combine like terms. 23 minus 14 is equal to 9. 6z minus 5z is equal to z. Therefore, the value of z is equal to 9. Let us now substitute this value to the expression 5z plus 23. So 5 multiplied by 9 plus 23 is equal to 68. Therefore, the measure of the angle TSU is equal to 68 degrees. That ends our lesson on the applications of triangle congruence. For your activity, answer the following. Letter A, find the value of x. And letter B, find the measure of the following segments. That's all for today. Thank you for your time and effort. I hope you have learned a lot from this lesson. Again, this is teacher Eliza May Kunanan, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Have a good day and God bless.